proud of him and all of our IDF guys who are on the front lines and under in tunnels. <laughs> they all kind of continually. And uh, we're, just, we're just so thankful for the way the Lord has protected him and his good reports that really help people know how to pray. And thank you so much for your faithfulness, Chaim. It's an honor to have you here tonight. We're really blessed to have you here. And I just want to recognize a special friend and uh, special friends. Jan Willem and Ellen Vanderhoven are with us here tonight. And this, uh, she's just out of the hospital for three days and has to go back in. And, and for them to come, it was quite a, uh, quite a, a special thing. And it really, it, we're very honored that you would come. We love you. And, and it's an honor to us to have you here and to be able to pray together and stand together tonight. So, so many of you in the room, and please forgive me if I don't recognize everybody because there's so many that are good friends here, but we're very thankful and we welcome all of you. Jen? So tonight is an awesome night. Tonight, history is being made. We know we are living in these amazing times. We saw yesterday that the enemy is roaring, <laughs> but God is roaring louder. And we are here together to blow that trumpet in Zion to sound the alarm because that day is coming that the Lord will come and he will welcome his bride and we will call out to him tonight. Tonight is a practice night for the Lord because he's coming one day on this night and we are going to welcome him, the Lord of glory, King Yeshua, the King of kings, the glory, the God of glory. We're going to welcome him ushered in that glory here. And we want to just welcome everybody because we're so glad. I know God brought you here. And the sounding of the alarm today, that sound of the shofar, is like the voice of God that is going to go over Zion and from Zion and over the world. And we just want to thank you and welcome you. Amen. Uh, it, it definitely, my name is Chaim, uh, means life. Uh, I deaf or whatever it is, and you, do, you don't know if they're going to make it, and I've had to be in funeral after funeral, and, you, and I'm just one person. Imagine all this country, the travailing, the, the pain and the trauma that is, is happening now. But there is hope, and I think that's one of the things that we're holding on to, the hope at the sound of the shofar. And I was just thinking about this. Why does it say in Leviticus 23, a memorial of the blasting of shofar. There's not too much said about this time, this night. A memorial. Are we to remember Mount Sinai, the great shofar? Are we to look from God's perspective and time is already over and, and just seeing all the times where the shofar has affected and impacted people and this land? What's it all about? I think of back in time, the, the seven lambs. One ram right tonight, uh, one bull and seven lambs offered right there on the Temple Mount. And then, of course, 70 bulls in tabernacles, Sukkot, like representing the 70 nations. So that just means like, uh, it just means like a completion. I was there at the, at the wall, and I'm thinking of this circle of like the closed circle. That means we're, we're ushering in the seventh month right now, Tishrei. Seven is like completion. The seven lambs, it's like completion. And, you know, even looking at this challah bread, you know, when, when the time is complete, that means there's no more time. That means we have now to do God's work and do it well and do it right and do it good. And I think that's another just encouraging, encouraging word as we rally because we're not here just to feel good. We're here because God has got us alive for some purpose before the seven completion happens, which is probably soon. <laughs> um, so much time. And tonight, of course, is that Feast of Trumpets, Yom of Trumpets, Yom Teruah. Glorify Him, truly, as if this is that night, this is that practice run, to remember that He truly, this is that practice run, to remember that He truly could be coming tonight, could be coming tonight. Are we ready? Are, okay. Blow the trumpet in Zion. 
from his holy mountain. <laughs> Yay! Joel 2-1. <laughs> Start with the first blowing of the shofar and scripture reading, which I'm going to call uh, Robert and Rick up for the... Uh, We'll start with the sil for the uh, we'll start with the silver trumpets. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you, Father in heaven, for your scripture word, your word that gives forth life, that gives forth life. Instruction. Louder? Got it. Okay. This is from Psalm. No, it's not. this is from Joel 2, verse 1. And... Yehovah. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, Leviticus 23, verses 23 to 24. And Yehovah spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of that month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing the trumpets. And holy, uh, and holy convocation. Uh, and from Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of Jehovah cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Joel chapter 2, verse 1. <coughs> Stand up together and stand yes. up as we do this, and we'll, we'll face towards the north. Uh, actually, we'll go kind of northeast here, which hits both what God is doing right now concerning His Balak and concerning your land. Amen. So we'll blow three blasts on the trumpet, and then let's give a shout of praise to the Lord. <laughs> Next scripture is Psalm 81, verses 2 to 4. Blow on the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed, on our solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel and the law of Yah of Jacob. Psalm 81. After this I looked, and behold, a door opened. This is Revelation 4, by the way. There's verse 1. After this... I looked, and behold, a door opened in the heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up here, and I will show thee things which thou must be hereafter. We're lighting candles now. Patricia.
ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר קידשנו בדם של ישוע. וציוונו להדליק ניר של יום הזיכרון, ונתנו את ישוע משיוחנו, אור העולם. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us by the blood of Yeshua, commanded us to light the candles for this day of remembrance, and has given us Yeshua, our Messiah, light of the world. Thank you, Lord. Yeshua, we celebrate you tonight. We celebrate your victory. We celebrate the victory we have in you. Lord, we celebrate the fact that we can come before you boldly, before your throne of grace, because you've washed us with the blood of the Lamb. So we just thank you, Lord. We thank you right now for your blood and that you paid the price for our sins, Lord. Though our sins be as scarlet, you make us white as snow. And I thank you, Lord, that we can come before you tonight with that confidence, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that you are the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness. And this light is shining in this dark moment, this time in history, Lord. And I thank you that we can also celebrate your victory, how you protected Israel last night, Lord. You are so good. Let's thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Rona. Now, you know, this song, everyone knows this song. It's very popular in Messianic congregations. Blow the trumpet in Zion, right? Yeah. Everybody knows it. But you know what? Nobody really understands the context. We read the context earlier. A lot of times we hear it and we think this is a happy, joyous, celebratory song, right? No. This is the day of the Lord. The prophet Joel is talking about a day of darkness, a day of disaster that we can't even fathom. So we're going to open with this song, but I want it us to do it in a prophetic way. That it's not just this happy-go-lucky messianic song that everybody's a happy sing-along. Because it's not. But it's a declaration for people to get ready. Because the Lord is coming. He's coming, but it's not. It's going to be a fearful time. It's going to be a fearful Blow the trumpet, blow the show up.
are fixed on you, the returning king clothed in majesty. Lord, we are going to rejoice, Lord God. We're going to rejoice when we see you face to face, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that this time of preparation, Lord, would be deep, 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 deep. Go deep, Lord, go deeper. That we can go deeper in you, God. We want to go deeper in you.
Isn't it just amazing to be summoned by the King of Israel to come up here? Come up now, my beloved. Isn't that amazing? And you think about Mount Sinai, the, the memorial of the blasting of shofars. I think of Mount Sinai, the giant shofar in the, coming from on top of Mount Sinai. And he's saying, come up here, kingdom of priests. I want you guys to be a kingdom of priests. In the end, we were a little too afraid and sent Moses and a few others, you know, but you remember that moment, come up here, come up now, my beloved. You know that in Mount Sinai? Guess what? It wasn't just Mount Sinai. It hap didn't it happen with, with John the Galilean? Isn't God calling us? And I know that, so this memorial of the blowing of shofars, I was sitting there at the, at the Western Wall. Don't really like to call it the Wailing Wall. It's a t place closest to where the temple stood right over there. And I'm sitting there, and the wind started blowing the book of Psalms, blew the pages to Psalms 78. Psalm 78, which is the Aliyah story. You guys know I like to talk about Aliyah all the time. The Jewish people coming into the promised land. But what did it say there? We forgot about God and his salvation. We forgot about his, his provision for us. We forgot. We forgot. We, how quickly do we forget in our own life? not even talking about thousands of years ago, in our own life, how quickly can we forget? And I think that as a soldier, since October 7th, I've been called up and, I, and I sti I'm still in. And uh, I think we just gotta remember. 
You know those sounds of the, the sounds? There's four distinct sounds that are made. Tkia. This blast probably on top of Mount Sinai would have been a blast like Tkia. You know, then you have Shvari. And that's remembering that God is sovereign. So I just want to say this. God is sovereign over his land. Even if there's missiles that attack and even if the enemy tries, he's still on the throne and he's still king and he's still sovereign. Sovereign, yes? Sovereign. Check. Okay, number two, shvarim. You, you know the, do you know how you have shvarim, what that means? What is shvarim, that, that three, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, that three blast shvarim. What, what does it mean? What does that mean, shvarim? Broken. Broken in a contrite heart. Broken. God wants us to not be all prideful. He wants us to be ready for him to move and just be a broken and a contrite heart is what God wants. And that's a resound that we have for repentance, the shvarim to repent. Other people have, other people have happy new year. Their new year looks a little different than our Yom Teruah. Uh, you know, we're, we're almost like, this is a comedian said this. He said, it's almost like Israelis and the Jewish people are like how they are after their new year. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about last night. I'm sorry. You know, this is how we are on our Yom Teruah, some call it Rosh Hashanah. Number three is, yeah, Teruah, Yom Teruah, which is that alarm, that alarm, that did, 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 nine staccato. Did, 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 it's like alarm time. It's like go time. And as a soldier, when you see that uh, rabbi get up on the, put his prayer shawl on, get up on the tank or the commander, get up on the tank and he gets the shofar out, it does something to you. You think, man, he's not in the back. He's leading from the front. He's literally getting on that tank and saying, come like this, acharai, after me, acharai. Let's go into the midst of the danger and you don't know if you'll make it out that day. If you'll see your family again, you give the call to your family, you know about this? Just call to say hi, no secret mission details. Just call to say hi. How are you guys doing? Well, well, I'll see you later. That could be the last time you talk with your family, you know? That blast, nine blasts, called Tua. It's like, let's rally and let's follow the commander. He goes before you, he goes with you. So that's, one is, one is he's sovereign. Number two is, we have to have a broken heart. Number three, this whole moment is, guess what? He's leading the way. He's leading the way, not leading from behind. The officers, they lead in the front. He's leading. So number three, he's leading the troops. And he's, he's jealous for his land, zealous for his land. These, the bad guys better watch out because you don't mess with something that God is jealous and zealous for. The last one, Tkiagdola. Of course, that's the great redemption, isn't it? The great redemption, the seven, seven, the completion, the day one of the seventh month, you know, day seven. It's all, it's happening. The seven lambs, it's happening. And, uh, and it's exciting to be alive for such a time. So I just wanted to say this last thing is as we remember, say, Lord, we remember your sovereign. We remember that we want to have a broken heart. We remember, number three, that, that you're leading the way and we remember that you have a great plan of redemption for this land and for us. So I just want to say a word of prayer over my friends, selfishly, over my friends in Yahalom, but then over all the troops that, because the, the, oh, we're going to do it? So here's a good time to do it, is guess what? You jump, imagine this, you guys have imaginations. Okay, there's the officer jumping, putting the prayer shawl on, getting onto the tank or up on a mountain. And he blows a shofar and says, Acharai, follow me into a dangerous night. Right tonight, that's happening. Right tonight, as we're sitting here, it's happening with friends of mine. So, yes, Lord. Avinu shuba shamayim, anachu modim lecha, sheata ribon al Yisrael. You are sovereign over your, na your land. We remember that. Yeah, we don't forget. We won't forget. We, this memorial, we want this memorial. There's things in the future that we need to be on time with you for. 
Help us to remember your sovereign, Lord, and encourage each of the, the, the troops, Lord, that there would never be confusion in our camps, but in the enemy's camps. Never fear in our camps, but fear in the enemy's camps. Victory in our camp, in the camp, uh, camps of Israel. No, we're not perfect. No, we have all kinds of mess-ups. We recognize that. Even some explosions and our own people died sometimes in Gaza with that Idana Medi and the whole thing. So we just, Lord, we, we're not perfect, but we do trust you. And we just say, Lord, move in our imperfection. Continue to uh, have victory. Even today, no soldiers would perish and die, Lord. And, and just we thank you, Lord, that you are watching over this land. We thank you, Lord, also that even as people are doing these fun traditions, Fun traditions, tashlich. Interesting, taking a piece of bread, saying, I don't want this sin anymore, throwing it into the water. Taking a piece of stone, a little stone, I don't want this sin anymore, throwing it into the water for a new season. Or where people are, are gathering and feasting with the family. Or where people have the round challah. Or where people are wearing white, like it's a new clean season, a new clean time as the, the cleansed bride. These are cool traditions, but we just pray that now it's all coming real from within us not just uh, traditions it's coming real as we blast the shofar we'll hear your shofar in our hearts and we'll be changed and we're, no we're not just gonna let moses go up the mountain we're going up to so over all the troops give them wisdom to see where those uh, tunnel shafts are they can be well hidden especially in hezbollah uh Hezbollah in Lebanon, southern Lebanon, which even in Gaza, to find where they are, it's very hard to be able to dismantle them without danger, uh, endangering ourselves. to just give us that skill, we pray, to recognize the enemy, even if we don't have all the fancy equipment like thermal or some of the best night vision. With what we have, we just pray you'll continue to showcase that even where we're not enough, we're just not enough, you're enough. In Yeshua's name, amen. Stay here, stay here, Chaim. Thank you, Chaim. We just want to thank you. We want to thank you and all the IDF for standing out there for us. You guys are out there on the front line laying your lives down. Guys, let's give him a hand and let's give him an amazing... We just want to really bless the IDF for being out there. And I want to ask everybody to just stand up and pray with all your might to bless the Israeli soldiers that are out there right now, the ones that are in Lebanon, the ones that are in Gaza, the ones that are going to be going out, and also the, the, the people in the Air Force. Oh, man, we love them. We want to bless all of them right now. So, Heavenly Father, right now, we just, put, we just pray a blessing, a blessing out over the Israeli army. We thank you, Lord, and we just pray right now your glory over them, that you will go before them, behind them, and all around them. We thank you for your angels that are just coming in to help them, Lord, everywhere they go. Lead them and guide them. You are their Lion of Judah. You are their light, their, their, their pillar of fire. Lord, and put your glory over every single soldier right now, Lord. Yes. Yeshua's name. Yes. Oh, one oh. Thing is we still do believe in miracles. I almost forgot. We still do believe in miracles. So we just thank you for the miracles of the past. That past meaning like hours ago. <laughs> but we just thank you for the miracles of the future. And we believe for it. And we ask you, Lord, over this land, showcase your miracles that you promised in Micah chapter 7. The same miracles you saw. You will yet see my wonders and so we believe for that in Yeshua's name. Amen. This is actually, we are living in biblical times, guys. We are living in biblical times, and we are seeing those miracles in front of our eyes. What happened last night and what happened in April was not for nothing. God did great miracles. And let's thank him for it and ask him to do it again. Amen. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Can you just reach your hands toward Chaim to represent all of those in the IDF? Lord gave me a vision of angels like they had come to Elijah. And remember, they brought him special bread. 
It wasn't just any bread. He could go 40 days and 40 nights on one loaf of angel's bread. (laughs) So, Lord, we pray for all the IDF. We pray in your mercy and grace for angel's bread brought down from heaven, the bread of your presence from the holy tabernacle in heaven, brought down to each one, that they will be supernaturally recharged after they've poured out so much for a whole year that they... They will eat of the bread of heaven that allows you to go in that strength for 40 days and 40 nights. It's just, you're just amazed at their strength, Lord, that it will be resurrection life. The same spirit, the same Ruach HaKodesh that raised Yeshua from the dead will make their bodies full of energy, full of strength, full of life in the name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. May be seated. There's uh, something we, uh, we thought we should share and then uh, proclaim tonight because we want to, to hear what God is saying right now, don't we? And uh, one of the things the Lord uh, showed uh, in 2019, he gave me a vision of the Lord above the Temple Mount wrapped in clouds of darkness. Usually he's wrapped in light. But this time he was wrapped in dark clouds, and sometimes the scripture he is. And flashes of lightning were going out from his presence. And one flash of lightning went toward Tehran, Iran, and struck a demonic throne. And that demonic throne started shaking, and pieces of it fell off, which would mean it wasn't destroyed, but it was severely set back in what it was trying to do ahead of the Lord's timing. And then another lightning strike went toward Moscow, Russia, and it it did the same thing to a demonic throne there. The third lightning went toward Ankara, Turkey. Now, those three were enemies at that time, and a week after the Lord gave that vision, the foreign ministers of of Iran... Russia and Turkey met together in Ankara, Turkey. So they were obviously planning something inspired, I believe, by these demonic thrones. And then uh, a couple, three weeks later, it was Sukkot, and we felt the Lord said, our dear friends, Jan Willem and Ellen were here with us. Many, some of you others were here in the room. We, we felt the Lord said that night that we should proclaim those the lightning of the Lord, according to Psalm 29, verse 7, the voice of the Lord is like flashes of lightning, and that we should declare his lightning strikes over those three thrones. Now that night, we felt the Lord showed us one more from Psalm 29, where it says in verses 5 and 6, uh, it says that the voice of the Lord strikes the cedars of Lebanon. Now, cedars of Lebanon are huge trees. Some of we've, Patricia and I have seen them when we were at the Beirut House of Prayer. They took us up in the mountains somewhere. 2,000, 2,500 years old, huge trees. And Hezbollah has taken that symbol on the flag of their most radical unit. It had, they've co-opted that symbol of Lebanon, saying, we're the cedars of Lebanon. But that verse says, when the voice of the Lord goes forth as lightning, he will splinter the cedars of Lebanon. He'll turn them into toothpicks. <laughs> he will splinter them. He will divide them. And so we're going to proclaim this again tonight and proclaim in each of these three directions and then blow again the the silver trumpets. Uh, But I'd like to just show you quickly if, if, Leon, if can you show that video real quickly? Are we able to get that with the sound on it? This was what happened on in October during that night as we proclaimed out. And as most of you know, we have a a lightning storm in Jerusalem maybe three times in a year, thunder and lightning. This is what happened as we as we did that. Now this is such a... This is the, first of all, the direction of Turkey, three blasts. This way is the east toward Iran, toward Tehran, three blasts. I guess my friend Human, would you come up quickly, Human? Are you right here? Okay. Uh, everybody stand up, and we're going to face first toward the north, 
And and uh, and then if we can have this, well, we're going to have uh, uh, Robert. If we can have the two trumpets, we'll blow the trumpets right after this proclamation. Yeah. So we'll make a proclamation first toward the north concerning the cedars of Lebanon, that the voice of the Lord strikes them like lightning to splinter them. And the wonderful thing is in that scripture it says, then Lebanon will leap like a calf. When does a calf leap? When it's led out of the stall. But it's freed. So we're not just praying for Israel. We're praying for Lebanon to be freed from the evil oppression of Hezbollah. And that as that cedar is splintered, they will leap like a calf. That they can be set free. We want Gaza to be set free from Hamas. We want Hezbollah to be, we want Lebanon to be set free from, from his, uh, Lebanon free from Hezbollah. We want Iran to be set free from the evil regime that's the head of the octopus. And so we're going to proclaim first to the north. So reach out your hands in this direction is the north. And we will proclaim together. Just proclaim this after me. The voice of the Lord strikes like lightning. The voice of the Lord strikes like lightning. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The, the, of Lebanon. the, the voice of the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. And now we'll face toward the east. This is the east toward Tehran, Iran. And I'm so blessed to have with me my friend Human, who is an Iranian uh, Muslim background believer. And we're going to proclaim this scripture together. <laughs> One new man. <laughs> and he's been doing these wonderful banners that are going around Israel. And one was put on Zion Square that actually said that Jerusalem is the throne of the Lord. And then it had this scripture that we'll quote now where the Lord says that he says, uh, I will set my throne in Elam. Now, Elam was the royal provincial area uh, where the capital of Sushan, where, where Queen Esther was. So when he says Elam, he's it'd be like, we, I'll set my throne in, in Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. He's saying in that region, in Elam, in the capital, the governmental capital of Persia, which is now called Iran, but the real name is Persia. He said, I will set my throne. So we're going to proclaim this together. Do you and and uh, you join and agree together with us, and then we'll blow the silver trumpets uh, on that. Uh, sorry, just a moment. Okay, do we have someone else who blows the silver trumpet? You can, can blow, blow it together with silver, Robert. Can we blow all the shofars? Yeah, all the shofars. Everybody get your shofars ready. As soon as we do that proclamation we're going to have, we're going to blow all the trumpets. Yes, go ahead. You get that one. So let's, uh, here we go together. So this is Jeremiah chapter 49, verses 35 through 39. This is what the Lord Almighty says. See, I will break the bow of Elam, the mainstay of their might. I will bring against Elam the four winds from the four quarters of heaven. I will scatter them to the four winds. There will be a not a nation where Elam's exiles do not go. I will shatter Elam before their foes, before those who want to kill them. I will bring disaster on them. Even my fierce anger declares the Lord. I will pursue them with the sword until I have made an end of them. I will set my throne in Elam. Say it again. I will set my throne in Elam. I will set my throne in Elam. And then he specifies that it's the evil regime. And he says, I will destroy her king and officials, declares the Lord. Yet I will restore the fortunes of Elam in the days to come, declares the Lord. Let's blow the trumpets and the shofars now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
means. Hallelujah. 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 Say it, the Lord God Almighty reigns. The Lord God Almighty reigns. Say it with me. The Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah for the Lord our God the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah for the Lord our God the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah for the Lord our God the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Amen. And He is setting His throne in Elah. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Your throne will last when every other throne has crumbled and fallen apart. You set back these thrones. You, you shake them. You allow them again to rebuild. But the time is coming when you will destroy all evil thrones. And only your throne will endure forever. And we bless you, Yeshua, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and on this night of coronation with the shofar, we blow the shofar and we say, no king but Yeshua. No, say it, no king but Yeshua. 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 King of kings, Lord of lords. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God, let us just take a moment to realize where we are on the first evening of Rosh Hashanah. Thank you for choosing us to stand in Jerusalem as we look out the windows upon the Temple Mount. You've chosen, you have handpicked every single person in this room for such a time as this. God, as Rick was speaking there are territorial spirits over the land. And God, you describe in Daniel 10, 13, the Prince of Persia. And whatever that entity is, we just pray wholeheartedly in agreement that you destroy it. You free Iran, God, as you said in... Yes, God, destroy its hold over Iran, Jesus. And God, as you said in Jeremiah 49, 38... You will set your throne in Elam. You will destroy its king and officials. So in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, destroy the Islamic regime of Iran. We ask you, we pray of you, we beg of you. Stabilize Iran, stabilize the entire Middle East, Jesus. And God, remind the world that the Persians have been the friends of the Jews for 3,000 years. And we've only been enemies for less than 50 let us rebuild that bridge. Let, let that bridge be rebuilt. Let the start of that bridge being rebuilt be today. We are rebuilding that bridge today. And lastly, God, I'm about to unveil the 18th mural, the 18th Woman Life Freedom mural. In the name of Jesus, show me where you want that mural to be. Put all of, here in Israel, God, here in Jerusalem, show me the wall. We put all of these prayers in your precious hands. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Numbers 10, verses 8 through 10. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations, including this one. And if you go to war and we are, in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and you shall re be remembered before Jehovah your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, ye shall blow with the trumpets, 
over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your Elohim. I am Yehovah, your God. Numbers 10. Psalm 47, 1 through 5. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto Yah with your voice of a trumpet. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us. Boom. And the nations under their feet. Boom. He, <laughs> he shall choose. He, he shall choose our inheritance for us the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. Yehovah is gone up with a shout. Yeah. Woo! The sound of the trumpet. And, and Yehovah with the sound of a trumpet. Psalm 47. One more blast. And with the sound of the trumpet. <laughs> It's an earth-shattering wake-up call. The question is, are you ready? Are you personally ready for when the Messiah comes? Imagine this is the night that Yeshua comes over here on the Mount of Olives. Our hearts have to be ready. Tonight is also an awesome night where God opens, they say, the book of life. And the question is, is your name written in the book of life? And it's all up to us personally to really get our hearts ready for the Lord. And I'm, if there's any people here who don't know him yet, this is that time to be ready. To know for sure that your name is written in the book of life. To be written in the book of life, the Lord asks you to take on his son, Yeshua, so that we will know him and bless him, and that he will come in us and live inside us. And it's also a day of great teshuva for those that know the Lord already. Most people here probably do. It's a day to be ready to prepare our hearts and ask God to forgive us for our sins, known or unknown, because the unknown is also counts in the spirit realm. Are we ready? If he comes, reminds me of the wonderful parable of the virgins, right? And with the five virgins, with coming up, and, they're, <laughs> and they don't have enough oil. When the, when, the, when the bridegroom comes and they have to go back to get oil and they miss him. What's the oil? What do we need to be filled with? We need to be filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Each and every one of us need to be filled with the Holy Spirit completely. So when he comes, we are ready. And in a minute, I want to pray. We're going to have a time of teshuva, a time of repentance a time of blessing one another and also asking us, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we are ready when you comes. You see, tonight, historically, it's the fifth night, the fifth feast of the Lord, right? The fifth, it's the, we all know that when Yeshua came the first time, he fulfilled 
the first four feasts with his life. And when he comes back, he's going to fulfill the last three feasts again with his life. And it can go very quickly. Do you know he fulfilled the first four feasts in one year? Wow. Historically, that's amazing. Can you imagine he could fulfill the last, the last three feasts in one year? It's incredible when you think about it. They weren't ready back then either. They, he was like, they're not ready. Are we ready now? But at this day is not historically, before we're going into that time of Tishua, I also as I want to uh, explain what happened on this day historically. Most archaeologists, for example, believe that this is the day the Ark of the Covenant came into Jerusalem. The glory of God. Right through here, young Willem. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> right through here into the city of David, where the tabernacle of David stood, of course. It was also the day where the kings of Israel were anointed. It was the coronation day of the kings of Israel. And one day it will also be that coronation day when Yeshua returns. And he will come back as that bridegroom for his bride. And are you ready, bride? I'm speaking mainly there to people that know Yeshua, that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? He will come back. And this amazing and awesome day, we don't know, like we said, we don't know when it starts because it's kind of like in comparison to a Jewish wedding. He comes back and picks up his bride very quickly, and he marries her immediately under a chuppah. And then he takes her away to his father's house. And nobody knows the day or the time when he comes, because it comes as a thief in the night. That's why we don't even know when it starts. That's why this feast is known as a thief in the night. Do you know that in synagogues all over the world, they know that on this day, this day is like a thief in the night. It's, it's incredible. And we know that when Yeshua comes, it's also like as a thief in the night. We don't know exactly the moment. But God has given us this day to remember us, to always be ready. And it's for everyone. Because we love Yeshua. Because it's his feast. And when we love Yeshua, we love the Father, of course we celebrate his feast. Because we love him so much. And we want to welcome him. And he will, he will fulfill again this feast with his life. He will come as our bridegroom. And he will marry us immediately. And it's both a spiritual and a physical thing. Historical, it will be amazingly historical. But it will also be a spiritual thing for each and every one of us. In a way, this day is a reminder of the beginning of revival. The glory of God. It's an announcement of the glory of God coming in. We are proclaiming it. Wake up. Because the glory is coming. The glory of God is going to come, and therefore we got to be ready. I just pray that we'll all be ready when he does. All right. So what I want to do, uh, Rona, I want to ask you to just come on the... Um, Yeshua said, if we love one another, love, he said, no, if Yeshua said, love God and love one another... Then we fulfill the whole Torah. And he showed us how to do it because he loved us so much he gave his life for us. He laid down his life for us. And he's asking us, God, can we love God and love one another? So right now I want to um, go into a moment where we first love God and then we love one another. 
And usually we, we would have the Shema Israel here. But later? Okay, we'll do it after. Okay. So maybe take a moment for yourself first. Tell God how much you love Him. Make sure you are right. And then we will pray also for that Holy Spirit to come. Just, um, it's interesting for me for the past 11 months to be around a group of people who are willing to lay their life down for me at a, at where if the need would arise. And, and I just thought about that. Where, where do you have that in life where people around you are, if needs be, <clears throat> they'll give their life for me. I would do the same. That is no greater love has any man than this. But we in our life think, well, there's Brenda in the office. I don't know if I laid my down. Brenda. Then there's Gary. He makes the coffee. It's di it's kind of a different reality when you're in the midst of, and it could we could all be in the midst of these scenarios one day. Hope we never have to be in those scenarios. But that is the love that God wants us to have, one for another, like a team, like an actual team. Uh, and and I, I appreciate being part of a team so very much. I just I'll just say this is that chuva. Shuva, like to turn instead of just thinking what am I leaving behind sometimes we think I'm not going to do that anymore I'm not going to do that anymore I'm not going to do that anymore instead of just thinking like that what are we turning towards Shuva is what are we where are we placing our countenance our value are, are we turning towards Jerusalem have we have we turned our countenance towards Jerusalem uh, and and someone says but I don't I can't even think that far of of the path that I'm going to go on the new path. I'm going to try to imagine the new path. You don't have to imagine the new path. It's just one step in a direction, and then you take another step in that direction, and then others can, can follow you, and you, it's called a path. That's how you make a path, and I'm going to end with this. When you go into Lebanon, when I went into Lebanon in 2006, we're the guys who have to go first through the minefields. There's all kinds of minefields. Okay, so when you go in there, you have this little knife, and you go down and you find where the mine is, clink, 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 armed, and you you able to navigate your way around it, or put a little marker, and you tell everyone, step only where I step. I mean, you, before you go in there and you mark it, each step is marked. If you step a little to the left, someone behind you steps a little to the right, they could die, because they'll hit the landmine. So that's a path, one step at a time, is how we got into Lebanon from the border, cut the fence, and we went into 2006. That's what's happened again right now. Uh, and so I'm just thinking of it in our life. People are going to be following you. People are going to follow your path. And it's one step at a time with God and, uh, and turning our countenance towards Jerusalem. So let's just take a moment and pray for Tishuba. And then I want to ask Michal and the children to come up. Father, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, forgive us our sins, Lord. No, no, no. We just also stand in the gap for Israel, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to forgive Israel, Lord, for any sins. No, no, no. We stand in the gap, and we want to thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you for your amazing grace that you have for all of us. Thank you, Lord. We pray that you will forgive us by the blood of Yeshua. privilege to come before our holy king we worship you O lion of judah king of the jews king of the nations we come before you and we ask that you would give us a clean heart and renew a correct spirit ruach nachon in all of us father 
as we come before you because you are holy, holy, holy. And the whole earth is filled with your glory. I pray that you open our eyes that we might see your glory this night. And not just us, but all Am Israel and all of the nations shall see your glory in this season, oh God. Arise, O Yah, and let your enemies be scattered. We submit to Elohim, we resist the devil, and he shall flee. Thank you, Father, that you're raising up an army to line up with the army of heaven. You are the Lord of hosts, and we say, Hineinu, Shlachenu. Here we are, send us, and use us for your glory. Hallelujah, that the glory of Yehovah will be seen through us, through your bride, through your people in Zion for such a time as this. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam sheikianu vekimanu veigianu lazman hazeh Blessed are you Adonai, our God, King of the universe who has kept us alive and sustained us and brought us to such a time as this. Can we all rise and do the Shema, the traditional Shema together? Okay, so we're going to face the Temple Mount, which is somewhere this way. This way. This way. This way. So let's do, where's my wife, Ashley? The traditional Shema into our Shema Yisrael And you shall love Hashem your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your resources. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now you can bring the track, please. It's okay. Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Echad. You can sit or stand. We're going to worship him. Ve'avda et Adonai Eloheicha bechol levavcha, bechol navshecha, u'bechol meodecha. Hear Israel, Adonai Yehovah, oh God, Adonai, He is one. Ya, ya, da, 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 ya, da, 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 ya, da, 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 ya, da, da, da. Come on, congregation. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Ushemo Echad, Ve'avta Oh, 
Shofars, it's a good time to blow the shofars. We worship you, Lord. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord split those leaders of Lebanon. Hallelujah! For He sits as King forever. The Lord sat enthroned in the flood. Hallelujah! When the enemy comes in like a flood, you raise up a standard against them. Hallelujah! Arise, O Yah. Let your enemies be scattered. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Yehovah Echad, Yeshua Hu Melech HaMashiach, Yeshua Melech HaKavod. One last time, yada da. This is amazing, and it's so wonderful to sing this together. 
Uh, in fact, we did a youth video was just put out in which they not only sang it in Hebrew, they also sang it in Arabic. Wow. <laughs> Arabs from the country singing Shema Israel. I mean, that's a prophetic thing that God is doing. But I, I, I want to, sorry, just because of time, our friend Jan Willem has to leave right now. And I want to honor this pioneer that the Lord has raised up. He's a dear friend. And, and God has used Jan Willem and Ellen through the years to pioneer many, many things in this land that are so strategic. But I think the most important thing is that God has given him a, a relationship with Prime Minister Netanyahu as a prophetic voice to him. And I told Jan Willem tonight what I've been praying in, in, in uh, these last few months for him is that the prophetic counsel that he gives to him will have the volume turned up and that the evil counsel will have the mute button put on it. <laughs> the prime minister gets all kinds of counsel all the time. He's bombarded with counsel. So Father, we believe you tonight as John Willem prays that the counsel of the Lord will go forth from this place of, of worship and prayer where you are enthroned on the praises of your people. We lift up Prime Minister Netanyahu before you and we believe you, Lord, that these like Jan Willem, who you've given a, a place to be able to, to speak prophetic counsel, that the volume will be turned up on what they counsel from you and that the mute button will be pushed on evil counsel. And we declare together, according to your word in Jeremiah, that the yoke of the nations is broken over Israel, and that Israel is no longer enslaved by foreigners, but she will hear the voice of the Lord. Jan Willem, pray. What's it? Jesus stood right in front of Jerusalem, weeping. And he said, you will not see me anymore till you welcome me. By saying, Baruch Haba Shem Adonai. When I read it, I realize that 80% of the preachers are not biblical. The Lord is a king. He will not come without a royal welcome. And if that's true, no one that today says he can come anytime knows the Bible. For the Bible says he cannot come unless he's welcomed. By his own city and people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's why he is a man of sorrow. We can shout, we can praise, but there's a power in praise that is not just positive. It says the high praises of God are in our mouths and a two edged sword in our hands. Yes, yes. To execute. God's will upon the nations and its yes. leaders. Yes. I have prayed many, many times for Bibi to become the leader of this nation. And I even have said to him, if you will finish the war, mm -hmm. like Churchill finished the war in Europe, up to Berlin, right. you will become the Churchill of this day. Yes. Right. And even the Israeli commentators are telling now openly that because of the last two weeks he has already become one of the most amazing statesmen and we can praise the Lord for the miracles but we must also understand that my God is bigger than just the army that did a fantastic job I want more than just the Israelis to do a good job I want a God that will prepare this nation yes. for the welcome yes. of their king. Yes. Yes. And at this very moment, 
He's not welcomed. Yeshu means let his name be blotted out. And the only way in which that word, that rejection of messianics, will be turned by God in that very nation that rejects to welcome him. It's going to happen in this valley. And the Lord has shown me and different people like Richard Honorov. He has prayed. Others have prayed around it. We are going to be at that feast in the valley because God has said, through that valley, David danced before the ark of the Lord. It's coming. And the Holy Spirit is going to fall and people, as I've prayed and believed, that cumbus stumps will have their legs returned to them. And all of Israel will see the fulfillment of God's word. Not by us having our wonderful charismatic session now. Something more is needed. And that is what God said. I will pour out my spirit. Not just our prayers. My spirit of grace and supplication. Not the physical return of the Lord will make them welcome him. They have to welcome him before he comes back. And no one preaches this. And the only one, or the only way, in which he is going to be welcomed is going to happen in this valley. We are going to be in the valley, not with the big amount of preachers, I said, Lord, I will wait because you have promised me in this valley that the Holy Spirit will come in such a powerful way during the feast, as you told me in 1978 when I began the embassy in the Feast of Tabernacles. I am going to use the Feast of Tabernacles for the double Pentecost. That's why Jesus used the Feast of Tabernacles. And it's going to happen in this valley. If any man thirst, let him come unto me. I want to be straight with you. I thirst for that, Lord. I hate it. When I have people around me that I love with all my heart, we pray for them. Their marriages break up. Their cancer kills them. And we go on praising, praising the Lord. I said, Lord, that's no honor to you. I am, if you're happy with that, go on with your charismatic meetings. I know that my Lord said, if you believe in me, you shall do the same works as me and greater. My wonderful daughter is helping for years, soldiers without legs on the horses. I said, you must be with me. Bring all the wheelchairs. For I want buses to go from Haifa, Beersheba, and Tel Aviv from all over. If the Israelis hear, not that the little pain in my knee is gone, or my little miracle here, but that people will get their legs back. And the Holy Spirit will come. And our meetings, even such as these today, will be totally different. May God bless us. And may God bless Bibi. You know what I pray? And what I say to him? Finish the job. Lord, let Biden, this evil, corrupt administration, not hold Bibi back to destroy the nuclear reactors. We can claim the power of the Lord over Elam. Let's do it. But I pray that God will use Bibi to crush the nuclear capability of these demonic mullahs so that Israel will not be threatened like Hitler did with total extinction. May God bless you to be part 
of that revival. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for Jan Willem. We thank you for Ellen. We thank you for strength and healing as their days, so shall their strength be. We thank you for the price they've paid to pioneer in this land. Again, we pray, O oh Lord, that as Jan Willem gives counsel, that it comes from you, that you will amplify, turn up the volume on that counsel. And that the mute button will be put on evil counsel. And we thank you, Lord, that your will is not just for the good of Israel. It is for the good of Iran, the people of Iran. It's good for the people of Lebanon. It's good for the people of Gaza. We thank you, Lord. Let the peoples go free from these evil spiders and evil spider webs that have oppressed them. Let them know your freedom and let Israel know your freedom. And Lord, we do agree together. Let there be this double Pentecost upon this land, in this valley, and all through this land in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, guys, we're, we're running a bit late. And I know everybody is also hungry, but the Lord's feast go first. We're not, we're going to wait with food. That's okay. We're taking his food. So much more important. And we also want to just return to that Teshuvah. And I've asked Michal and the children to sing a very special song. And while they're singing it, Let's also surrender to him and do Teshuvah and pray for each other while they are playing. Maybe you can also touch the person next to you and pray a blessing over them. Pray a blessing over the people over you because Yeshua said we got to love one another as well. It's not only one way. It's not just vertical. It's also horizontal. We need to spread that blessing. So let's just go ahead, Micha. So this is a Teshuva song. It's called We Surrender. And it's quoting Daniel 9, um, where Daniel is making uh, Teshuva on, on, on his behalf and behalf of the nation. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and it brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. O oh, Havaya, great and awesome Elohim, who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him. And with those who keep his mitzvot, Where wants to join we with have the girls? sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled, even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. Neither have we heeded your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings and our princes, to our fathers, and to all the people of the land. We surrender. To the Lamb of God we surrender To the King of Kings we surrender To the Lion of Judah we bow down
bow down before the king. We bow down. We bow down. We bow down. We bow down. We bow down and worship. Bow down. We bow down. We bow down. We bow down and worship. Unfaithfulness, which they have committed against you. Denied to us belong shame of face to our kings and our princes and our fathers because we have sinned against you. We Transgress your Torah and has departed so as not to obey your voice. Therefore, the curse and all written in the Torah of Moshe, Eved Elohim, have been poured out upon us because we have sinned against Him. We surrender to the Lamb of God. We surrender. the King of glory, we surrender to the Lion of Yehudah, we bow down. We worship you, Lord, Lamb of God, Yeshua, El Shaddai, El Elyon, we surrender. We surrender. But you, Yeshua said, love God and love one another. And we still need to pray that prayer over each other. So, Rona, could you come up and... What I would like really to do is... I want you to bless the person next to you. I want you to speak for, for, for just a few minutes to say a prayer over them. A blessing is an infusion of God's love, of God's glory. And when we start to bless, the Holy Spirit starts changing everything. 
So just turn to the person next to you, even if you don't know them, and speak goodness and life over them. When your heart is pure, we're going to now do communion together. Kiddush. So if everybody would just, we're going to do Kiddush and communion before we have dinner. Please turn around again to the front. And if the people with the bread and the wine would just like to come forward.
All right, we're having the communion come up. The Kiddush, traditional Kiddush from Israel for the Messiah. If everybody would please turn around again. If you have bread and wine, just come forward. about to do this you know there's uh, there's this real moment that we all know of that we have to examine ourselves right we have to examine ourselves before taking this and we have to recognize the unity of the body it's not just believers that look like me or my brother here Fuad an Arab brother you know, there, there are different types of people in the body of Messiah. We're all you together in this. And I think sometimes we just allow for separations to come in. And that is really drinking judgment onto ourselves and eating judgment onto ourselves. So I just, the word I had is, not my will, but yours be done. This was a different cup, but a cup that Yeshua had to take to bring us together this cup uh, and he took that he said not my will but yours be done are we ready to no matter what it is just to once again say not my will but yours be done and then we have we get to have the cup of redemption this cup of betrothal this cup of the body <clears throat> Historically, why is it round? It, it's round now because it's the, the shape of the crown of the King of Kings, of Messiah. And it has sweetness inside. It has all kinds of raisins inside. Why? Because God is good. God is good. And that is just so beautiful. Even in the time of hardship that we are living in right now, this is a reminder that God is always good and faithful to us. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם המוציא לחם מן הארץ. אמן. Blessed are you Lord our God, King of the universe who brings forth the bread from the earth and down from heaven. Amen. To my Arabic brother first. Yes. What? Yes, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Yes. Okay, I'll bless this now. Let's just take uh, one of them. You can pass it around, okay. <clears throat> and then he took the cup and raised it. You know, when we are unified, when let's put it this way, when Israel was not unified and we're burning tires and we're yelling at one another, this one's too religious, this one's too secular, this one is, is uh, like this, this one's like that. Do you realize that when we're not in unity as a nation, people, the nations around see that. Some people even, believe, analysts believe, that because of the disunity in Israel, the enemy saw an opportunity to come in like a flood. That's what they called it, the Al-Aqsa flood. They thought, this is the opportunity. Guess what? People see us as believers. They see us when we're not unified, when we don't have love one for another as well. They, people see us, and it could be a real stain on our track record. But if we want to bear fruit, like this pomegranate, we want to bear lots of fruit in this season, and that means we need to be in the vine. 
We need to be in the vine and together in the vine. So I just am looking at this fruit, and I want to bear a lot of fruit in this season. And so, Lord, as we're... <laughs> Lord, as we're in this time where we want to see the land come together, we want to, we want, don't want to look just too big. Start with us. Start with me. We just sometimes look so big that we, we lose the forest for the trees. Start with me and start with me tomorrow. What can, how can I bless my, my friend? How can I be part of this, this kehila, this, this unity? How can I be part of the unity of Israel? How can I bless my friend? How can I bless someone who doesn't look like me? How can I do that? Regardless of, of uh, what, if they have a black hat on or if they have a, a hippie hat on, I don't know. <laughs> we just, Lord, help us to be able to be unified in this land, especially in the body of Messiah. I bear a lot of fruit in this seed, just like this. Amen. Not my will, but thine be done. Mm. Does everyone have some bread in there? Yes, and now you also have some juice. <clears throat> so he took the cup and he blessed it. He raised it and said, this is my blood poured out for you. And, you know, no greater love has anyone than this, that they lay, it, than they lay their life down for their friends. And Lord, we recognize that's what you did. You have led by example. And we do the same. So, Lord, just, we just thank you for raising that cup over here in Jerusalem and for the celebration soon to come. Yes, after the Valley of Yehoshaphat. Help us make the choice, Lord, to look to your will, not my will, but your will. Even if it's unpopular. Yeah. Some people might say, I don't know if I want to stand with Israel. I don't know if I'll be unpopular. Even in the safest countries in the world, someone could still feel unpopular, maybe. Does that matter? Does it matter? What, we're, we're part of something. We're part of a covenant here. It's not about popular. So he raised the cup. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei pri hagafen Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. Amen. Now let's bring up the shofar blowers. We're going to have dinner in a minute. We're going to blow the shofar one more time before, uh, before we have dinner. And we're also going to bless... Yeah, we're going to bless the apples. We've got we to gotta bring apples. And, 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 um, but before that, I just want to remind everybody, tonight is a special night. It might be a long service. Maybe we're not used to that. But we got to give it all for the Lord. We're giving everything. We want him. We, we, you know, time goes by. We need to just give everything we have. And what we're going to do is after the blessing of the apples, we're going to go out and we can have this delicious meal out there. But there's going to be a second half. And I promise you the second half is going to be very special. We're going to start in the dark. So at a certain point during dinner, I will turn off all the lights. At that moment, go back and sit down. And then we're going to turn on the menorah. And we're going to worship the Lord with the light of the menorah. Overlooking Jerusalem, the view here is stunning. And then we're going to proclaim and prophesy and blow the shofar over Jerusalem, you will also be able to come forth. So don't go away after dinner. That is after dinner, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be so beautiful. And at the end, together, we're going to blow that last shofar, that last, that last blow. <laughs> so as a practice. Okay. So now we will, the apple, oh, we will do the apples and the, or we have one more blow of the shofar? No, we'll do the apples, we'll do that after dinner. We'll, after dinner, yeah. So let's do the apples and the honey now. Yes, apples and honey. 
They're coming. They're over there. So we ask all the children to come forward because the children are going to give out the apples and honey for the good new year here in Israel. And Michael, you want to say a blessing? Yeah, just do the blessing. And, and that will be, and then we will have dinner. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, bore pri ha'etz. Blessed are you, Adonai, God, King of the universe, who create the fruit of the tree. And we thank you, Yeshua, that you are the living tree, the etz chaim, ha'yoreh min ha'shemayim, who descended from heaven to give unto us salvation, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit, just the kingdom of God. Taste and see, you guys, that he is good. Chag So hold on, guys. Yes, go on. Blow the shofar, guys. Everybody. Guys, come over here. Shana Toba, 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 announcement. Um, we have also supplied a, a wonderful meal of shawarma, very good chicken meal for everybody. And we would also like to ask those that, you know, that if you want to contribute to that meal, we would be very much appreciated. Uh, it's about 30 shekels a person. And we're going to put a basket right up here. Oh, there's the basket. Yes. Here is a basket. I'm going to put this in the front. So if you do would like to also contribute, you don't have to. Only if you would like to. Uh, it's a free will offering for, the, for us so that we can help to do this feast. And we can continue to, to do this. All right. Thank you so much and have a wonderful dinner. for reminding me. What?
We're going to go to a break. We will start the video again for those on live stream. We'll start again shortly. Uh, we'll start a new stream on YouTube, the same channel. So if you're watching from outside of uh, Israel or abroad, we will start a second stream.